Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about properties of real numbers. I'm just going to talk about two properties this time, the commutative property and the associative property. Now this is a little bit misleading. It looks like I only have two properties up here, but commutative and associative, they both kind of have subcategories you can think of them as. Uh, there's the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. Also, the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two. I know it only looks like two of them up there, but actually there's, there's four different properties here. Okay, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to talk about what their definitions are, and then I'm going to give the algebra for them using variables, and then I'm going to give number examples of them. Okay, uh, first off, the commutative property. Uh, commutative property simply states that I can add uh, or multiply two numbers in any order. Uh, it does not matter what order I add or multiply them in. And so that gives us the difference between the commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. But again, I'll show you the difference between the two. Uh, so for the algebra portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this um, uh, first the, the, uh, uh, the commutative property of addition. I'm going to show that first. Um, let's just use some, uh, some random variables, it doesn't really matter what we use. Uh, let's do something simple. A plus B, okay, according to the commutative property, if I have a number plus another number, uh, in this case A plus B, it doesn't matter what order I add them in, so what I can do is I can actually switch these up. I can say B plus A is also going to give me the same thing. Okay, so that's the commutative, excuse me, commutative property of addition. So that's with algebra, now let's do that with numbers. Uh, let's use a couple of numbers for A and B. How about uh, 4 and 5? 4 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 4. Okay, now these are pretty simple numbers to use. So if I take 4 plus 5, I get 9. On the other side of the equal sign, I get 5 plus 4, which is also 9. So we can see just with, real, with these real numbers that it doesn't matter what order I add the two numbers in, I'm still going to get the same answer. Okay, so that's the commutative, commutative property of addition. Now for the commutative property of multiplication. Okay, I'm going to use some of the same variables, uh, but, in the, but this time I'm going to multiply. So it's going to look very, very similar, but yet it's kind of a separate property. Okay, commutative property of multiplication, A times B is equal to B times A. Now notice I didn't put a dot or a multiplication symbol between them. Remember that when we two, put two variables next to one another, there's what we call implied multiplication. Um, we just know that we are supposed to multiply these two numbers together. So A is a number, B is a separate number, and since they're right next to each other, i got to multiply those together. Alright, so A times B is equal to B times A. Commutative property tells us that it doesn't matter what order I multiply them in, I'm still going to get the same answer. All right, so let's do this with numbers now. Uh, I use 4 and 5 for A and B, so let's just use the same numbers. 4 times 5. Now, with numbers, I can't just put them next to each other. That looks like a 45. So what I have to do is I have to use parentheses to denote that I am multiplying. I guess I, what else I could use? I could use 4 dot 5. Make sure that dot is raised up a little bit so it doesn't look like 4.5. Um, or I could use 4 times 5, but these bottom two examples here, we usually don't use the, those this late in algebra. Um, the dot sometimes can look like a decimal, so we don't usually use that. And the x here, the multiplication symbol, well, just like I said, it looks like an x, so sometimes it looks like a variable. So these two we don't even use, and so instead of using these two, we use parentheses to tell us the two numbers are multiplying together. Anyway. Uh, so that's 4 and 5, and again, commutative property of multiplication tells me it doesn't matter what order I multiply them in, so I'm going to switch these up, 5 times 4, okay, 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 4 is still 20, so you, you can see that it doesn't matter what order I have the numbers in, I'm still going to get 20. Okay, so those are the, those are, that's the first property, commutative, but there's two kind of subcategories, commutative property of addition and commutative property of multiplication. Okay, and so there's two of them there. I know it doesn't look, I didn't write it up there, but there are two of them there. All right, so next is the associative property. Um, commutative property is when we have two numbers together, 
Uh, it doesn't matter what order we multiply two numbers. So commutative, you can think of as, I can think of it this way, it's how we add or multiply two numbers. So that's commutative property. As opposed to associative property, we actually have groups of numbers, or, or a group of numbers, we'll call it a group. A group of numbers. Okay, so that, that's, that's actually the big difference between the two. Um, is commutative property is how we look at two numbers, how we add or multiply two numbers. Associative property is how we add or multiply a group of numbers. Okay, now let's, let's do it with the algebra and with numbers to get an idea or a better idea of what these two properties are. Okay, so I'm going to use some variables again. I'm not going to use A and B, so let's use something else. I'll use uh, X, Y, and Z. Uh, those are other common, famous variables that are used. Okay, so we have X plus Y plus Z. So here's my group of numbers. So again, two numbers, A, B, and group of numbers, X, Y, and Z. So you can see the definite difference between commutative and associative. All right, so if you remember your order of operations, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplic uh, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, whenever you have addition here, I'm supposed to add these from left to right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take X and Y, and I'm going to add those together first. So I'm using parentheses here to denote do that first. All right, take X plus Y and then add Z. Associative property of addition tells me it doesn't matter what order I add these numbers in. Okay, so I can take X plus Y plus Z, but instead of adding the first two together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the last two together. So I'm going to use parentheses here to denote to add the last two together first. All right, now what does that, what does that do? How does that affect um, these numbers? Well, again, associative property tells us it doesn't affect anything. We're still going to get the same answer um, no matter what numbers we use. So let's try this with numbers to see what it looks like. Uh, so let's use some simple numbers. Uh, I used 4 and 5, so let's, let's go even simpler than that. We'll do x is 1, y is 2, and z is 3. So in this case, I have a little close together here. 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay, add those together. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is going to be 6. Okay, so we can see here that this left side with numbers added in, that's going to be 6. So let's see what the other side looks like. So I'm, I'm basically moving my parentheses around a little bit. Okay, so I got 1 plus 2 plus 3 right there at the edge of the screen. Okay, 2 plus 3, parentheses do that first. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. Left side was 6, the right side is 6. So we can see with numbers, this associative property holds true. Okay, the left side was six, the right side was six. It doesn't matter what order I add these groups of numbers with. All right, so that is the associative property of addition. Now let's go with the associative property of multiplication. That's going to be my next one. I use the same variables. So I'm going to take X times Y times Z. Now, same thing with PEMDAS, same thing with addition. I do, if I'm just multiplying, I do everything from left to right. So in this case, I have to take X times Y. I have to do that first and then take that times Z. Okay, that's the proper way to do multiplication if all you're doing is multiplication. All right, associative property of multiplication tells me that honestly, it doesn't matter what order I multiply all these numbers in. I can order, multiply the first two together or X times Y times Z. I can multiply the last two together first. So it does not matter what order I multiply my groups of numbers in, as long as the only thing I'm doing is multiplying. All right, so that's with variables. Let's now do this with numbers, so it makes a little bit more sense. All right, so I used ones and twos and threes. I'll use those again. One times two. Okay, I am using the dot here. I don't want to do too many parentheses, so I'm just doing the dot here. Uh, one times two, and then Z is three here on the outside equals one on the outside, two times three on the inside. Again, I know I said earlier not to use that dot, but in this case, I don't want to do parentheses over and over again, uh, so I am actually using the dot there. Make sure that dot is raised up so you don't mistake that for a decimal. Anyway, uh, back to the numbers. One times two is two, two times three is six. 
On this other side, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. The left side is 6, and the right side is 6. So that we can see associative property holds true. Doesn't matter what numbers I use. Doesn't matter what num how, I, how I multiply them. Doesn't matter what order. Okay? I'm always going to get 6 with the numbers 1, 2, and 3. All right, so a little bit of summary. Those are two properties of real numbers. You could almost call it four properties. We have the commutative property of addition, commutative property of multiplication, and again, that property states that uh, it doesn't matter what order you add or multiply two numbers, which is different from the associative property. Okay, associative property of addition, associative property of multiplication, that tells us it doesn't matter how, uh, what, uh, what order you add or multiply group of numbers. Uh, it could be three or four or five numbers. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm just using three. Okay, so those are two properties of real numbers. Again, the commutative property of addition and of multiplication and the associative property of addition and of multiplication.